Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're going to be looking at creating another volumetric lighting effect that looks something like this. Now I did another volumetric lighting tutorial recently that looked like this, but that used a, a very different technique. Uh, and this new one I am going to be basically just ripping off an idea of Andrew Kramer's from Video Copilot and I don't really have any decent excuse for doing that other than the fact that the techniques required to achieve this in motion are pretty different to what you can do in After Effects although you can get pretty much the same result. So anyway apologies to Mr Kramer and let's get started. So I've got a project here that is 19, 20, 10, 80, and the frame rate's 24 frames a second. Duration is 10 seconds. And my first task is to create a background. Command 2 to come to the library. Generators. I'm going to select Color Solid and apply that. F4 to come to its controls. Click on the color. And we'll make that black. Call this group Background close it up and I'll lock it by hitting its lock button. Next I'll make a new group command shift N and I'll call this base and we first of all want to make a floor so to do that I'm going to zoom out a little bit on the canvas I'm going to hit the R key to activate the rectangle tool F7 to activate the HUD I'm going to pick a very dark blue, something like that. And, and then I'm going to drag a rectangle that's pretty much the exact same size as my canvas. Close up the HUD and the color tool. F1 for its transform. Hit the reset key to center it all up and come to its rotation and rotate it through 90 degrees on X. And let's call that rectangle floor. Our next move is to add a camera so we can see what's happening. So let's hit Alt Command C. And when it says switch to 3D, let's say OK. Let's hit F1 for the camera controls. And let's rotate it through minus 10 degrees on X, just so we can look down at our floor. Let's zoom in to full fit the screen. Let's take the floor. I'm going to set a scale of 300%. Then I'm going to hit F4 to come to its uh, the shape style. And I'm going to set a feather of 500. So it'll just disappear off gently into the background. Uh, next, I want to introduce some text. Uh, and I've got some text ready-made in my favorites called light text. Really do recommend that you start using favorites if you don't already do so. The favorites menu is just great. You can put any old thing in there from the most basic to the most complicated and just call it up as I'm going to do like that. There we go and there's my text. Now if I zoom in a little bit you'll see that the G is intersecting the floor and that's not very pretty so very quickly let's activate the text tool drag over the G come to the text format tab and here under the Y offset let's just drag up till the G is no longer intersecting the floor so a little bit pedantic but it does make all the difference to whether that looks plausible or not so that's my excuse. Um, let's next make the text black. So let's come to its style, click on the color tab, make that black. Now I want to make a shadow and I could use the, uh, the lighting uh, to create a shadow, but I always prefer not to do that. First of all, because it's very render intensive and second, you can't really control the look of it quite as much as I'd like. So I'm going to make a fake one. So to do that, I'm going to clone the light by hitting K and I'll call this shadow. And first of all, I'm going to rotate it through 89 degrees on X. Uh, 90 degrees would make it disappear into the floor, so 
89. Then I'm going to twirl open the scale and I'm going to scale it by 400% on Y. So I've got this nice long shadow as though the light was a long way distant. Next I want to make it a little bit more plausible. So Command 2 to come to the library, filters, blur, and I don't know if you've ever used this, but it's a really nice uh, filter. It's gradient blur. So let's apply that to the shadow. Let's turn on the overlays, command forward slash, uh, which allows me to use these uh, on-screen controls. So I'm going to drag the first one up to the top there and the bottom, the bottom one to the bottom there. It doesn't matter about the exposition really in this instance. So just, just as long as they're off the edge of the canvas. F3 for the inspector, and now we can set a blur that increases from the starting point. And that's a really nice effect that's very cheap to process, which is, which is a really good thing. So hide the overlays, command forward slash, F1 to come to the properties, and maybe just let's uh, reduce the opacity of that down to 75%. Um, so that's my shadow done. So next we need to make the object that's going to be the light source for the rays. So let's hit the C key to activate the circle tool. F7 for the HUD. Make sure that the fill color is set to white. So I'll hold down the shift key and draw out a circle that's just very slightly bigger than my text. And I'll close up the HUD. I'll come to the transform and hit the reset button. Now you'll notice that the circle is being bisected by the floor uh, and an easy way to get around that is to come to the floor and come down to its blending mode and set that to screen. Okay, so let's come back to the circle and we'll set an Y position of 100 and a Z position of minus 2000. We'll hit F4 to come to the shape controls and set a feather of 100. Right, so that's all the basic geometry done. Now we need to make a new group, Command Shift N, and let's call this Rays, because this is where the action is going to happen. So I'm going to take my light and clone it by hitting K. Add that clone to the Rays group. And I'm going to take the circle, hit K to clone it. Also add that to the rays group behind the text. Next comes what I think is the really clever part, and uh, I'd never have thought of it on my own. Um, so we'll come to the rays group. Uh, we'll hit Command 2 to come to the library. Select Filters, Blur, and we'll use Zoom Blur, and we'll apply it to that rays group. F1 for its blending mode and set that to screen. F3 to come to the controls for the zoom blur. Let's crank that value up to 60, the amount. And now if we adjust the X and Y position, as if like magic, we have that effect. And that's because if I solo that rays group, you can see basically, and turn off the blur, I've got a shape that's this white circle cut into by the black, and that's what generates that uh, radial blur. It's very, very, very simple, very, very clever, and the effect is really impressive. Now, the problem is that if we take the pan tool for the camera and we move around, that's no good at all. It's moving in completely opposite direction to what it should be. So how are we going to fix that? Well, we're going to have to use some complex rigging to achieve that. And our first step is going to be to create a null. So let's make a new group, Command Shift N, and let's call this group null, and hit the R key to create a rectangle. Doesn't matter what it looks like, how big it is. F1 for its transform, and we will reset that. In actual fact, let's come to the shape and change that color so it's something we can obviously see, despite the fact it's never going to be in the scene. And let's call that rectangle null object. 
F1 to come to its transform. Now I want to enter some very specific numbers to make this whole thing work into the position for this null object. I want a y value of minus 540 and a z value of minus 3300, 3300. And then what I want to do is I want to parent this null object to the camera. So I'll come to the library, come to behaviors, motion tracking, and I'll select match move and add that to the null object. F2 to come to the match move behavior. For the source, I will make sure I select camera because that's what I want to parent it to. So now that's linked to the camera and we need to link the zoom blur filter F3 to come to its controls. We need to link these X and Y center values to the position of that null object. For very complicated reasons, which I won't bore you with, you can't link them to the position of the camera because if you apply a sweep behavior to the camera, as we will do, the camera isn't actually moving, so you won't get any results. So you have to use this double parenting procedure, which is quite clever, I think, uh, and my own invention. So let's make sure these X and Y are reset, centered up, and we're going to click on the X value, right click, add parameter behavior, link, and we'll drag the null object into the source well. Under source parameter, we'll hit properties, transform, position, X. And we need to change the scale to minus 0.5 and the X offset to minus 1920. Let's call that link X so you know what's happening. F3 to come back to the filter. We'll do the exact same thing with the Y. So click on the Y, right click, add parameter behavior, link. Again, we'll drag the null object into the source well. Make sure you drag the null object, not the null group, that you can get confused that way. Okay, source parameter properties, transform position Y. We'll set a scale of minus 0.5 and a Y offset of minus 1080. So you can probably understand that those figures relate to the size of the project, which is 1920, 1080. So let's turn off the null. And now if we pan the camera, as if like magic, we do actually have it all moving correctly. So there we go. Now let's, um, let's do a bit of stylizing of this. Let's select the camera, command two to come to uh, the behaviors, select the camera group, sweep, and apply that. Uh, F2 to come to its sweep controls. We'll start at minus 15 and end at plus 15. So now we've got an automatic sweep through there. Let's hit Alt Command forward slash to hide the 3D view, which we don't need anymore. And now those rays are a bit too strong, really, uh, and they're obscuring too much of the text. So let's select that rays group Command 2 to come to the library, filters, color correction, and let's select levels and apply it above the zoom blur. F3 to come to the inspector, we'll select alpha here, and then if we adjust the gamma, well, this is mid control here, you see I can reduce the amount of spill into the foreground and make that look a little bit more classy and just have the whole thing blasting away. You might like it blasting away, but I prefer that. And what we can also do is come to the blue value in the levels. So select that from that menu and pull down on that white control just to bring in a bit of blue into the rays. Very nice indeed. Um, I think I want to add 
a light just to l brighten up the background to make it look as though there is actually is a, um, a light source hitting the floor. So let's hit Command Shift L and it, immediately everything all goes completely wrong. Let's set up the light first of all. We want to increase its intensity to 750 and set its fall off to a thousand. Sorry, the fall off start to a thousand and the fall off itself to two. F1 to come to its transform and let's set a Y position of 750 and a Z position of minus 2000. So it's back there. Right, a number of things are wrong again. We need to exclude certain things from the lighting. Now specifically uh, that clone layer, which is the light source clone. Let's twirl open the lighting down here and where it says shading, let's turn that off. Let's do the same thing for that circle, which was the source. So let's turn that off as well. So now that's working a bit better. And if we turn that light on and off, you'll see that that sort of lights up the background and makes it look as though that light is actually there. But what we might also do is take the floor F1 and let's push it back a bit on Z. There, let's go for minus 1750. And that just enables us to read the text a bit better. Um, now there's one thing I forgot to show you earlier on and that's the, uh, the how to move the vertical position of the light. So uh, to do that we'll come to the rays group and this link behavior, this link Y behavior. So if we hit F2 to come to the behavior itself, if I adjust that Y offset value you can see I can move the rotation of the light um, and get it just to where I want. So just, just remember that Y offset will give you that vertical adjustment if you should need it. Okay, just one more thing before we go. You can actually throw any old rubbish into that rays group as long as it's got transparency and it will also add to the light source. So I'm going to come to the library command 2, come to generators and I'm going to select caustics and I'm going to apply that. Uh, and if I turn that on and off, you'll see that immediately that's added those rather nice rays to the scene just by applying the caustics. If we come to F4 for its controls and probably just turn down the speed a bit because it's a bit too uh, sparkling a bit too much, but um, there you go. So here's a render of that final scene. I hope this tutorial wasn't too long this time. Really nice effect. Again, huge kudos to Andrew Kramer for most of the ideas involved in this um, really genius stuff. So hope you enjoyed that one, and I hope to see you again next time. Bye.